I'm Josh. I'm working on my PhD in Islamic studies. My areas of interest are Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. I'm Charlie. I've danced also with cocaine bandits in Colombia, surfed across the border into Mexico, and have a master's in applied linguistics. I'm Nate. I grew up in Bolivia. My specialty is radical Shia politics. I've edited a book on Hezbollah, and I've had tea with some of the wealthiest men in the Middle East. We surf, dodge bullets, and we go to the ends of the earth for the sake of adventure. You can call us Black Box. Israel started bombing Lebanon, we decided to go. We were having dinner one night in L.A., having just watched some of the, the footage of the breakout of the war. That's right where we were. The conflict started when a cross-border incursion meant that two Israeli soldiers were taken captive. People on the ground in Lebanon firmly believed that the, Israeli, the two Israeli soldiers had actually crossed the border into a disputed territory, the Shaba Farms. And Hezbollah, since they have been running security for the past 20 years, seized them and uh, held them in order to exchange for hundreds of Lebanese hostages that are, have been in Israeli jail. Going to see people who are labeled here as total out, out, of, out of their heads, nuts, terrorists. It, it's difficult for people, a lot of people, to get their heads around. The ideas that we're interested in giving exposure to, ideas and people who don't even make it into the framework of Western discourse. What is a terrorist? And what is a war zone? And what is, yeah, how is life lived? Why are people doing what they're doing? Uh, and getting to, the, getting to the heart of that is super essential to what we're doing. In terms of logistics, uh, the kind of the route of the trip that we had to take because so much of the access was shut off as we had to fly in to Jordan, to the airport in Amman, and rented a private car to drive us through Syria into Lebanon. That's a long way around of getting in, but it was the only way that we could you know, work, work our way in. There was no direct route. Nate's in the front seat riding shoddy. Nate's got the sweet lengua, so he is uh, running taxi relations so far. So all the main roads were bombed as part of the um, Israeli strategy. It was more or less a siege of the entire country. So they took out ports, fuel supply, uh, all major bridges and uh, roads that were large enough and paved to bring supplies in and out of the country. Easy, this is a rental car. We pay 50 bucks a day for this, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Lebanon. Went over the border, into the Ka, sort of wound our way through, and then dropped down into Beirut. As soon as we crossed the border into Lebanon, the driver, I mean, it was a whole different deal. We had surfboards on the roof of the car that had to go in the trunk because it would have looked like we were smuggling missiles or something like that. Uh, the driver started flying as fast as he could. The adrenaline, I mean, you could just feel it everywhere. The adrenaline was just on high. There was policemen standing out, making sure that nobody was stopping longer than five seconds. Otherwise, the cars bunch up. It's a potential target for Israeli airstrikes. And as soon as you get out of Beirut, it starts to really turn Hezbollah, where there's all the martyrs, pictures on the street posts, and Hezbollah flags. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization we're well familiar with. Uh, they're part of the government, and uh, they're basically operating as a state right now in taking on Israel. Um, so we're going to go have a look at the Hezbollah side. We're going to steal some e equipment we left at home from Anderson Cooper. Uh, uh -huh. well, because when you're running around in the dangerous Hezbollah areas, if you're not in a flak jacket that says press or TV on it, and you don't have a helmet, you're going to get royally screwed. to Nabatea, it was a big freaking mess. Everything just totally destroyed. Craters in the road, uh, total ghost towns, like no one there. I mean, it was interesting because you have a block of houses that are all together, there's no one there, but then next block is totally just blown out and leveled. 
we stopped every once in a while and talked to a person that we'd find on the road, even though there was hardly anybody in any of the town. And we'd tell them that we were journalists and we were covering, and they say, where are you from? And we're from America. And I said, oh, why are they doing this? We love Americans. Why are they doing this to us? Excuse me. So, so we're here to people yeah. from America, we love it. Yeah. We love it. But the politics in America, we don't want. Yes, yeah. We're here to show them. That's why we come you, to film. You see. Yeah. So, OK? Yeah. We go from here. From, so from here. After we went through Nabatea, we arrived in Tyre, which is on the coast down there. Um, it's very close to the border, and it, it was just getting hammered. And all the main, even small roads in there were totally destroyed. We had to drive through <laughs> cornfields and like weird like lime dust pits. As we're approaching into the city, there's a massive crater. There's a car in there. It was quite a contrast to kind of the frenzy of journalists that were coming and going from, from Tyre. Most of the movement were uh, vans labeled with TV on the roof and on the hoods of their car for the large networks of the world covering the war from Tyre. At that point, the, the real massive the uh, bombing campaign hadn't begun in earnest yet.